I want to welcome everyone to another session in our Women Lead webinar series brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Burquist, your host today, as we are delighted to bring yet again another webinar to our Association of Professional Women. Our Women Lead webinars are designed for you as a professional leader in business, whether you are an aspiring female leader or if you are a woman leading people or teams or projects or companies. Our goal is to select topics and themes that support your goal to lead more effectively, achieve more effectively, and the bottom line, succeed more effectively in business. Our webinar is just shy of one hour, and at the half hour mark, we'll be answering any questions you've submitted online during the presentation portion of our webinar. So if you are online, and I see you all are, um, if you can look for the Q&A question and answer section, um, you're welcome to pose a question as our thought leader is ready to go to share some fabulous insights and ideas. Our topic today is on how to become a thought leader in your industry. So I'm excited to introduce our thought leader today. I want you all to know you're in for a treat. Um, I'm going to introduce you to Kaylee White, who is the owner and copywriter behind Kaylee Writes. It's, it's Kaylee White, and she's Kaylee Writes as her business name. It's so cute. Using her degree in communications from UC San Diego and the four plus years of blogging and online business experience she's amassed, Kaylee helped seriously stressed out business owners, hello, aka me, Michelle, and others, navigate the frustrating waters of creating content. When business owners work with Kaylee, they come away with the knowledge and the skill to consistently create and publish valuable content. Here, here, I agree. They also never have to worry about it because she's got their back. Yes, you do, Kaylee. <laughs> if you're interested in learning the skills it takes to love your content, um, she's going to give us her website soon. It's KayleeWrites.com. So, Kaylee, say hello to all of our attendees. And my dear, it is all you on talking about how to become a thought leader in business. Well, thank you so much, Michelle, for that wonderful introduction. You are always so good with words, <laughs> which I very much admire <laughs> being a copywriter. Aww. Um, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about how to become a thought leader in your industry. Um, it's this super cool thing that everyone is super hyped and very excited about because social media is kind of our lives now. Um, so let's get started. The first thing I wanted to kind of share with you is what I'm hoping you're going to take from this whole presentation. Um, I want to make sure that everything you're publishing from this point on, you're, you're aiming, you're focusing on increasing your status as a thought leader. You know, you're becoming an active particip participant in your industry. You know, you're offering very new, fresh, forward-thinking content. Um, and everything you publish has a purpose. Like, you're not just putting something out there because it's got a cute puppy on it. You know, it, it, it has a purpose. It's, it's there to either inspire action or inspire motivation or just to give some humor to your audience, but it, it has a purpose. It's got something behind it. Um, you know, as a copywriter, my words are meant to persuade people to take action. Um, I'm really hoping my voice is powerful enough to do the same. So I'm counting on all of you to internalize these takeaways, um, and I want you to actually take action on all of this. I'd love for you guys to follow up with me on where you're at and how you're doing with each one maybe I can persuade Michelle with my little words and voice um, to send a follow-up email to make sure you guys are all keeping this at the forefront of your mind but I want to take you know some time to kind of get into what a thought leader is anyway um, you know the Oxford English Dictionary kind of defines a thought leader as someone whose views on a subject are taken to be authoritative and influential and honestly I want to be an authoritative influential person because then I can basically say that the sky is purple and rain tastes like snozberries and people immediately nod their heads in agreement so I thought that would be pretty fun to do um, so why you actually need to be a thought leader. Um, I am working towards being a, an established thought leader, but I like to think of myself as one. Um, and it may kind of seem stupid to some people, like why do I need to be a thought leader? Um, 
thought leaders are are people who get a lot more recognition and then they end up getting more authority and more money which we all like and we all want to be a part of um it means you're actually able to make a difference into into, into your industry you know you're able to start new trends bring new ideas for how something should be handled try new things um you achieve more and you're just able to influence everything you get to be a part of the group that makes the waves in your industry you share your experience plus it's a ton of fun when you get to tell people what to do um you you get to, you know you're kind of the go-to person that people talk to when they want to t um, participate in conferences and panels and forums and videos and all of that um you're just someone who the industry goes to for advice so that's always a good thing and it's always something that people should be striving for um so this isn't something that you can can decide to do and then accomplish overnight you know it's not something you can check off even after 30 days it takes time it takes patience it takes effort to actually achieve becoming a thought leader um and the hardest person about becoming a thought leader is that you can't actually declare yourself as one other people kind of have to declare you and say so and so is a thought leader but they don't actually say so and so is a thought leader so how do you know if you are or not you know it, it's it's just kind of happens that you become a thought leader one day but the easy part of becoming a thought leader is that it doesn't take a lot of random hard you know strategy and actions to to become to that position you just need to take calculated strategic actions and you will be catapulted into the thought leader position before you even know it um so next slide is this is the how part of the kind of branding thing you understand you know you've got to work hard that's not something new you guys are all amazing business owners you guys have got the working hard thing down um you you understand why we want to become a thought leader we we've kind of gone through all of that we've talked a little bit about um what the benefits are which you know i mean it's not hard to, to realize that the person who's at the forefront of the industry gets to be the person who gets the big bucks um so it, it's time to kind of figure out a little bit of strategy around this um i'm including a mini checklist at the last slide that you can print out or this this thing that you can print out this slide um and we're going to go deeper into each one but this is just the basics it's it's you know having a brand design and a strategy it's building buzz around your business and then it's being a brand authority with your thought leadership so let's break that down a little bit um, so I'm not in any way shape or form a brand strategist I'm a content strategist so if you want a little bit more I suggest you speak with professional brand strategists I'm, I'm sure Michelle can respond, uh, refer you to a couple because she knows pretty much everyone. Um, <laughs> point out the, the basics of a brand. You know, you need to decide whether you're creating a brand for yourself or for your company. Um, is it the difference is if you have a company and you want to become the thought leader, you personally probably need a different website, different social media channels and different content than if you were focusing on making your company the thought leader in the industry um, I know it sounds like a lot more work but it's what you can do to push your business or even yourself to the next level so beyond deciding whether or not you're going to increase you your or your company's thought leader status you need to make sure that each online center you house your identity on is fully created and beautiful that means that all of your profile photos are similar they've got good pictures they're you know you, they see your lovely bright smiling faces um you've got carefully crafted bios and taglines that are all similar across the way um they've got the same information you've got your email and all of your contact information easily visible on each platform you're on everything else is in line um, all of the pictures or the content that you share has the same type of tone that type of thing so you want to make sure that when someone jumps onto like your instagram they're not thinking that this is a completely different person than the person that they saw over on facebook um so you know you also want to pick your brown colors get some images that cater to your style same photos um the titles so i know a lot of people have um revolving titles um 
throughout their company, I, I suggest that you actually pick one title and it stays the same on your, um, on all of your social media profiles, whether that's CEO, owner, founder, anything like that. It just needs to stay the same and consistent. So basically, like I said, you want to make sure that when someone finds you online, they've seen that you put time into creating a cohesive brand experience. Um, you know the importance of appearing professional online. You can't be a thought leader with minimal effort on these strategies, on these portfolios because each channel is a little segment of you each channel is where someone's going to come and they're going to find a piece of you to kind of learn more about you and your story and what you have to offer and being able to really promote a professional and um, top tier branding means that you put time into each one all right, so next is buzz building. This is one of my favorite things because it's a lot of fun to do. But uh, mm, I love once, that word. <laughs> <laughs> once you've got all of your social media profiles, everything's flushed out, it's all gorgeous and cohesive and beautiful, um, it's time to start building your buzz. Um, there's the traditional way through interviews, you do feature articles, um, just newspaper stuff, you've done speaking engagement, print outlets, all of that stuff. Um, it's still super important because that kind of gives you the more quote unquote authority, but there's a faster kind of um, more viral way and it's newer. It's not better, but it's just new. Um, and what you want to do is start by reaching out to your network. These are the people that um, you are friends with, that you talk to pretty much on a daily basis, people that you're comfortable with. Um, and, you know, they can be considered maybe industry leaders or they're super connectors or they're people who just have a really good online presence and are sharing good things. Um, but you want to reach out to them and you want to see if you can interview them on your platform. So that means that you have a blog post where you did a Q and a with them. You did a YouTube um, video where you, you sat there and you talked face to face, or maybe you did a podcast with them where you interviewed them just somewhere where you can ask them really good questions and they can provide their authority. Now I know this seems backwards. It, it kind of is like, well, why, why aren't I the one who's answering these questions and being the authority presentation? Um, this means most people, think you're more authoritative by asking good questions than by answering those good questions. So the better questions you have, the ones that kind of push beyond the, what do you do? How do you do it? You know, how did you get started? It's the ones that dig deep and actually um, showcase your knowledge of the industry. Those types of questions show that you know what you're talking about. You've been in this industry before and you've bypass all of that newbie stuff and you're ready to get down to the nitty and gritty so do those interviews and make sure that the people that you're interviewing is sh are sharing those interviews because once they start sharing they're promoting their interview they're saying look at this amazing stuff that i got you know interviewed on your platform starts to grow because all of their audience comes and checks out because it's housed on your platform. And then they find more of your content and they start following you because they like what you're doing. They like the questions that you're asking. They understand that you're not the beginner, that you've actually been doing this a while. Um, and then you start interviewing people beyond that. So you, you start interviewing your network's network. You start getting those people to share their interviews. You start getting those people to uh, promote and just and answer your really great questions. And it just kind of snowballs from there. Everything keeps going further and further and further. So the, the one word of caution I do want to issue with this is don't focus on all of the people who have a big online following. Um, if someone is doing well in their industry, it doesn't matter if they have 30,000 followers on Instagram. It doesn't matter if they don't even have an Instagram. Their name is already up in headlights in the industry. They've already got their platform established without going online and doing an interview with them is gonna spread like wildfire regardless. So social media presence is a plus, but don't make it be your defining factor on figuring out who you want to interview. Um, 
the more interviews, the more interactions you do with your network and your network's network and your network's network network and so on and so forth, the more you're going to build your buzz, the better it's going to be and the faster it's going to go. Um, it's going to take a little effort at the beginning, but I did warn you about that when we started this. So you really shouldn't be all that surprised. <laughs> So da, 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 we have arrived. You have built your platforms. You've filled all of the stuff out uh, as to your ability. You've kind of given the reason why you have authority. You've created your buzz and you've done interviews and industry and direction and gone to events and participated in industry groups online, yada, yada, yada. The next thing you need to do is cement your brand authority and the fact that you're a thought leader. So to accomplish this, you need to add something new to the industry, whether that's through new studies, experimentation, field studies, clinical, academic research, reflective thinking. It doesn't have to be something industry changing. It doesn't have to be something revolutionary. It just has to be showing something in a new light or responding to something already created or published in your own words. So you're showing it in a different way, um, something that nobody else can see because everybody has their own viewpoint. Um, this just shows you're wanting to increase the industry. You're wanting to increase the value the industry provides. And you're not just in it because it gives you benefits personally. You're in it to benefit the industry as a whole. You care about more than just your business, your dollar amount, your, um, your company. You, you want everyone to be there. Um, and beyond you know, including something new, you're publishing consistent content. Everything's high quality. It's valuable. It's consistent. It goes out on a schedule. Nobody has to sit there and wait for it unless they're waiting for it at your scheduled time, which I know I've done for a few people. Um, so it's whether it's <laughs> books, blogs, podcasts, webinars, e-products, any of those things you need to be publishing. You can host workshops, you can host forums, you can, you know, host webinars like we're doing right now with Michelle. It's every part of this type of content is expanding your authority and your thought leadership. Um, you know, you become a major player in the industry, but you have to have a major content marketing strategy set up that helps promote your status as this thought leader. Dun, da, da, da. Congratulations. You're now a thought leader. <laughs> <laughs> so Yay! It, it, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. It's not something that everyone can do because not everyone can be a thought leader. And that's just a lot of work. Um, most people don't even care about it, but the benefits that reap to not only you and your company, but also the industry are too great to ignore. Um, it, it can be a lot of work creating all of the necessary content on top of managing a business and dealing with clients. And it's not something many people have the ability to keep up with. You, you get to become the household name. Like who doesn't want to become the, the Apple of computers? You know, it, it's something that they're just, it's the rewards are too vast. I need to stop listing them, <laughs> but <laughs> don't give up when it gets difficult to maintain this, you know, look for resources to make your journey easier. Outsource the content creation, hire a social media manager to improve your following, schedule 20 minutes a day, every day to work on new writing for a blog post or your book or the webinar. You know, there are plenty of ways to fit this into your schedule without going insane because, you know, we don't want to become Michelle. <laughs> what? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I promise. But oh, no, I mean, I'm laughing. I'm totally <laughs> laughing with you. <laughs> but I mean, it's all a matter of how bad you want to become a thought leader and how important you think this is for your business, because the, it's just, it's so much fun to be able to be at the forefront and be like, this is what we're going to do today. And the rest of the industry going, okay, well, let's follow her. I, it's just, it's something that everyone should at least aspire to become and actually be working towards and that's where all of your content and everything that you publish should be working towards that all right well i ended like 10 minutes early 
but <laughs> that means more time Girl, for questions. Yay. That's right. And you should have more coffee is what I'm thinking, Kaylee. Oh my goodness. Oh my I goodness. You are awesome. Energy. I it's all good. It's for the last two days. So is, I've done nothing. No, it's good. It's like this. Was, okay. First of all, it's like, I'm laughing that I'm going to be the poster child of what we're about <laughs> to talk about. So know that. Because I think it'll create some great questions. We have some questions coming in, and this is how to reach you. So I want to make sure everybody will be able to see this online and um, will be able to ask questions. But awesome job on that, right? Um, the interesting part is, and this is where I wanted to got to get into some of the questions we've got, Kaylee. First of all, awesome overview, right? And I, I will tell you, there's not a business owner that I know of who doesn't want to be looked upon as a thought leader in their industry or in business, right? Mm -hmm. So here's some of the questions. I mean, I'm going to start with some of mine just because I think they're, you know, way important. And, you know, my experience, when you say you deal with stressed out business owners, tell me a little bit more about, you know, coming up with a content strategy because you spent some great time on the you know, design, kind of brand design and strategy. And I love the word consistent that you said, because I know we've struggled with that in CWI. But tell me a little bit about being a content strategist and what some of the business owners that are listening can do. Because I, I hear business owners struggle with this all the time because we're told to be content creators. And they're like, oh, my God. You know, so I don't know if you have maybe some more suggestions for some of the stressed out business owners on becoming more of a content creator. One, I know they should call you, so I'm just saying, <laughs> and I will share my great experience in working with you because it's been amazing and the things you've given me insight to on behalf of CWI, but what would be some maybe really specific suggestions of where business owners can start if they've done no content creation? Sure. Um, the first thing I suggest is to get out a pen and a notebook. Um, <laughs> that's kind of my starting point, and it's where I'm most comfortable. If you guys are comfortable with a blank Word document on the computer, I promise I won't judge. But it just it starts with getting all of the thoughts and the to dos and the shoulds out. Like you should start a blog, you should start a podcast, you should start doing all this. Just get it out. You shouldn't do anything. You should do what works for you and doesn't overwhelm you. So that means that if, if you can manage writing one blog post a week right now, that's what you should do. And to get started in creating that content and figuring out what you can do, I would just start a list of ideas just just make a running list um i know that you've set up a file in evernote michelle um i have yeah. a running list in trello um i've got a few clients who have a running list in google drive dropbox it doesn't matter where you put it but i want you to have one list i don't need eight of them they don't need to all be the same you need one list that you can access anywhere and everywhere to put ideas and just kind of drop everything. Just brain dump your ideas. So any type of content that you love, any type of content that you want to create, put it on there. Make a note on why you love it. Make a note on what type of content you want to create. That type of stuff. Uh, just get started here's some, there. Oh. Go ahead. You know, Kaylee, here's some other questions coming in on that. Because, you know, again, like I said, we hear owners all the time that struggle with this, and me included. And I'm at a place, which I'll, I'll share more about what my situation is and how you've been amazing with me and where we're at kind of a stopgap on being considered more of a thought leader, right? Mm -hmm. But when you tar start talking about what do you write about, here's, here's a question from somebody. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm a consultant. I, I have had, which I've had on my list for three years to do blogging. She goes, I don't know what to write about. That's so the question is, what should she write about? I mean, where do you start? If you don't have any ideas, what would be maybe some suggestions you would have for people on how they can figure out what would be good things to start with in writing? I've got two suggestions. Number one, start writing about any questions or any issues or situations that come up with your clients. Uh, it doesn't have to be like your whole strategy, but just so for me, if I'm giving this example, I would write a blog post about 
what to do if you have no ideas because that's the question I got asked. So if you have, if you're <laughs> consulting someone and they ask, you know, what do I do? What is my next step? You write a blog post called what's your next step? You know, you've got this, 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 and this done. Your next step should be this. So just take all of the interactions you've had with people you've networked with and they had, you know, more questions about what you do. Take all of the questions that your clients have and, you know, need more information on. Take client, you know, questions that any vendors or people you've partnered with have questions on. Turn that into your content. And then my second suggestion is you follow people on social media. All of us have social media. All of us follow a ton of people. And there are a couple people that you absolutely adore. Go look at their blog posts, figure out what type of content they're writing about, and write the same thing. Now, that's not, that's not an, uh, uh, an okay to plagiarize or to write exactly the same thing, but take their topic. So if they're writing about tacos on Tuesday, go write your own blog about tacos on Tuesday. I don't know where the tacos on Tuesday came from, but that's it's just a big, an It's a big Facebook thing. Believe it or not, I know that. Taco Tuesday, hello. Yeah, we we yeah. started using that. Yeah, it's big on Facebook. Let me yes. tell you about Facebook. <laughs> and social media should be the place you go to find ideas to write about stuff that you're going to post on social media. I know it sounds like a catch 22, but you're scrolling along Facebook and you read all of these articles. You're scrolling on LinkedIn and you're reading all these articles. People are asking questions. There's ads on the side of it. There's um, videos that you watch. Take that content and turn it into something business wise. Even if you see a video of a frog that's jumping in a cute little hat, you can turn that into a motivational post about how this frog had a cute hat and he didn't care what all the other frogs thought. It's the most randomest thing, but people eat it up. It's simple. It's not hard to understand. It's easy for them to digest and it makes them feel good. And that's the main point is content makes them feel good. That's interesting because I don't think I've ever heard you say that for the feeling good because I think what, you know, business owners get so wigged out about is, you know, what, sh what should I write? You know, I mean, but I loved what you said and I took a couple of notes because these were things I think that I took as, Kaylee, what, like, what problems do you solve for your customers, right? I mean, if you think of the questions that they ask that you solve as problems or issues or whatever you do for your clients, that is a good place to start, right? Like I want to give an example because we have one CWI member. I'm just saying if everybody would go check out her blog and, you know, hopefully she'll listen to this someday, but I want to tell everybody to look at CJ Westrick and HR Jungle because she pulls out employer-based questions that every small business owner has about employees, right? Yeah. Can I do this? Can I do that? What about this? What about that? And I'm like, it is a perfect example of what you're talking about, right? Yeah. Because she blogs about the stuff that really people should be talking about related to employee management. I don't know if you have another example of maybe somebody that you've seen who does a great blog, because I would like to be better on ours for just me personally as a thought leader. But are there a couple of other blogs maybe you could refer to that you say hey these are great examples um my favorite is actually one of my friends um ashley mackie cox of sprout hr.co i believe is her um website but well, you gotta spell that one again <laughs> it's sprout s p r o u t h r dot c o Oh, she runs an HR company? She runs an HR company and she does this. Oh, how thing. funny. And her blog posts are like 3,000 words long. Like they're enormous blog posts. But I love them wow. because they're, they're stuff that we also, you know, we think about. Are we ready? Am I ready to hire a team as a solopreneur? How do I get started about doing that? That type of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I yeah. just, I, I like to focus on my biggest problem solving superpower as you guys have a lot of stuff to do as a business owner, me included, but 
when I cut, when I first came into CWI, cause I'm relatively new, I got in, in, I think April. And when I got into CWI, I was just blown away by how amazing every single business owner is in this group and how much they've managed to accomplish and how much they're managing to do and push not only the industry, but their communities and the world. And you guys have a lot to do. Like, don't be afraid. I mean, it doesn't have to be me, but don't be afraid to go and get a virtual assistant or an online business manager or someone who can help you at least organize your thoughts and get you started. I mean, you don't, all you need is a list of topic ideas an editorial calendar and a list of places that you're going to share them and when you're going to share them and you can get started. You're raring to go. That's called your content strategy. I wrote it for you. Ta-da. You, you make it sound so simple, girl. And first of all, I want to say my experience with you has been amazing. I mean, you pulled stuff out of Thank me. That, but I think this is a difference. It's that, you know, we, we, we go about our day, Kaylee, and this is where I, I want to really give a, give a shout out to Evernote or whatever, Trello, whatever kind of on the fly jotting system that you have, because what changed for me and where we're going, and I say that because it's we, right, you and me, yes. <laughs> is you've opened my eyes to the idea that it's like, I mean, you just don't start creating content. There is, there is absolutely a process to this that you, you know, when you're on the fly is when I get my best ideas. And by using Evernote now, it's like I started to put like when I have a great idea or what I think is a crazy idea, I need to document it right away or I'm going to forget it later. And that's what I think has allowed me through conversation with you is content comes at crazy times when you're inspired or somebody says something. And I think that if it, do you feel like it always Kaylee has to fit with your business or you were saying kind of go with motivation or crazy. I mean, does it matter that your content fits with you and your business and remember you're speaking as a millennial and we have a lot of <laughs> um let's just say seasoned ladies <laughs> that are in cwi that at this point are going oh my gosh and to any of our attendees who are listeners are going i don't know if i can you know do you know kind of like stuff that's not part of my my service renderings right give some thought to that what would be your suggestions to, to those kinds of content creations so the one thing that I kind of want to point out is a lot of hesitation I sense from all of you wonderfully seasoned ladies is the, <laughs> the fact that each blog post has to be very like to the point businessy. And as a millennial, part of the unfortunately millennial group, um, we our attention tends to jump and that's not to say that when you write a blog post you know you're writing a blog post about your business and then the next time you're writing a blog post about ronald mcdonald down the street wow i'm getting some interesting topics popping into my head this time um but <laughs> you, you want to make sure that everything that you're writing has some type of emotion related to it. So you don't need to be strictly about business all the time, but you need to be strictly about your brand and your voice and your emotion that you want to reflect. So if I'm writing a story about my experience, then I want to write a story that's hopeful and inspiring and motivating and ready to like, take over the world and build my empire. And if I'm writing a story about a national tragedy, I want it to be sad and kind of toned down and respectful and, you know, just, just kind of honoring other people. You know, it doesn't always have to, to directly influence your business or what you do it just needs to speak to the human people because you i don't want to say you but as business owners a lot of the time we focus on get more clients get more customers get more clients get more customers and just as an employee doesn't want to be a number on an employer's spreadsheet your customers and clients don't want to be a number on your income sheet they want to know you. They want to feel like you want to know them. They want a relationship. And that means 
talking about things that other than business, other than what you offer, other than what you can do for them. It's, it's talking to them like a friend. And a lot of hesitation I also sense from older seasoned ladies. Uh, is the, <laughs> you seasoned, let's go there. <laughs> the, the, uh, is the, the fear that you're creating and you're not creating something that's a hundred percent original and wonderful and viral and all inspiring. And I want to let you know that that's never going to happen because everything that's been created has already been created. There's nothing mm -hmm. new about what I'm putting out. There's nothing new about Joe Blow down the street is putting out. There's nothing new that's, you know, going to be miraculous. It's just the name of the game. The type of content that you're putting out is new because you're putting it in your words. You have a special gift for seeing things in a different way. And now you need to share with the world look, this is my point of view. This is the way I see things. Because there are a lot of people who need to know that, who need to hear it in that frame of mind. And so being able to re reframe everything is your strong point when it comes to content. You know, Kaylee, it's interesting what you're talking about, because to me, what I see, and again, you know, I will say I see the seasoned ladies all day long, and I am <laughs> one, right? Um, but what's interesting is with content creation, I think there's so much stress and pressure over thinking, quote, article, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like magazine article. And what I hear you saying, maybe you can touch on this a little bit, is it doesn't have to be like <clears throat> 1300 words or a whole page. I mean, you could post short, sweet kinds of things. Am I right? That when you think of content creation or does it have to be like what else besides articles or like interviews, like we do a radio show, but what would be some other things that people could use under the umbrella of content creation that they could do? Let's say if you're not a writer, what would be some ideas you could do that would still put information out there and showcase you in a great way, but still would be considered content creation to be visible and seen as a thought leader? Oh, there's anything. I mean, there's podcasts, there's YouTube videos, there's, you know, all of the, the stuff that I've listed off tons of times and you've seen listed off millions of times on those articles that you hate writing and reading. Those, mm -hmm. those, those are things. But the one thing that I wanted to, to point out is that this is a relationship. You're entering into an online space where you have set your roots and you've said, this is my online house. This is my online identity. Now you are coming into my house and I want to form a relationship with you. So that means if I'm doing a podcast, if I'm doing any type of like video recording, if I'm doing any type of article writing or eBooks or books, I want to speak like you and I are in the same room. I don't want it to be super academic -y. Now, if you're a medical professional or a lawyer or anything like that, of course you have to have kind of medical jargon or you know more fluffed up jargon, but that doesn't mean that every piece of content you put out there needs to be that way. You definitely need to showcase your your knowledge and your skills and you definitely need to be able to uh, make sure you can pull that, that jargon out of a hat but when you're writing a blog post a week it's kind of hard to sit there and read medical mumbo jumbo every single week i mean right. you do it because you have to but i mean not everyone wants to and if you can take that medical mumbo jumbo and make it into something the normal everyday person can understand and feel like it's an entertaining conversation, you're going to have more of the normal people who are you looking to reach out to come to your website and want to read from you. And if you don't like writing, I have this amazing phone app called Anchor. Um, that's A-N-C-H-O-R, Anchor, like a ship anchor. Um, it mm -hmm. records five-minute phone calls from your iPhone. That's a type of podcast. You record five-minute snippets on your iPhone while you're driving, while you have that inspiration, while you're doing whatever, and you record it, and you're just talking to someone. You're, you're recording your voice, and you're being super friendly, and you're talking to your friend about this amazing, awesome thing, 
and then you publish it and go, hey, look at this awesome thing. We're talking like friends. That can be a type of content that you publish regularly and feature on your website. <laughs> I love that. I mean, do you think people can get away? I mean, do you only handle with the writing portion as a content strategist or do you also offer other services on, on content strategy? I'm kind of curious because that Kaylee writes, that's your website. Yeah. <laughs> but I know there's so much more that you shared today, which was awesome on this webinar. And I know we still have questions, but you know, I, I think we, we get so pigeonholed into thinking we have to be writers and that's mm -hmm. not always the case, right? Well, no, it's not. It, content is a broad term for a reason because there are just trillions of different ways you can produce content, but it's, it's content. It's not copy. Those are two different words. And mm -hmm. with the content strategy, um, it's not so much telling you, you know, what to do. It's, I, I come in and I, I say, okay, what type of content do you like creating? What type of content are you comfortable creating? Because not everybody's comfortable in front of a video camera. Not everybody's comfortable in front of a podcast. You know, they don't like the sound of their voice. They don't like the way they look. You know, they don't like the way they write. All sorts of different things. So it's what works best for you. And then figuring out what, you know, time frame, what week, Day, how often you can do it and publish it and creating it into a strategy that you can follow week by week and have like a checklist so that way you're not going well what do I need to do today you know what type of content can I produce you have a strategy set out in front of you to kind of go through every single thing and never have to worry is my content consistent is my content on brand is my content showing what I want the message to show? And that's kind of what I do is I help everyone set up a content strategy. I help everyone create an editorial calendar. And then I write all of the dang stuff so you don't got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and you do a great job on that. I mean, you, you took me places I never thought I would go, right? And I think that's what has been a stopgap uh, for me that I need to just jump over the fence on now is to really just start pushing out content. I mean, yeah. we do great. I do great with radio shows. I do great with webinars. Those are, those are definitely something we've implemented in CWI, but it's the articles. And I think that's the part that I, I want to, you know, now break up because you've given me some great ideas on that and we've created a strategy. Now it's a matter of just starting and I've always found on anything in business, Kaylee, I wanted you to touch on this. I'm assuming you just got to start. And then after that, you start building, you start tweaking, you start changing because that to me is how you build thought leadership. You know, you're, you're, what got you here won't get you there, right? That's my new, yes. my new motto in business <laughs> this year is, you know, to look at, you just, we got to start putting it out there. And, and that what I, is what I find that is so overwhelming. But when you do one, that gives you an idea for the next one, which gives you mm -hmm. an idea for the next one. And that's how it creates. Well, here's a couple of last questions we've got. And it's like, maybe you could talk a little bit more And this. Is, again, it was so quick. Um, what the person said, it was good information was talk a little bit more about buzz building, right? Um, just, I guess, ways to what build community because that's what I was taking and that was the question how to how to build more community what, what, what maybe you have a little few more details for what this question um, is getting sure. at sure sure um, so with buzz building it's basically creating buzz I mean interviews are a way to kind of jump start all of that you get started and it kind of builds the snowball um, it gets the frame, you know, the base of the snowman kind of started. Um, and then once you get a couple interviews, you know, set, you start going on interviews yourself. You start doing speeches. You start writing articles for, um, I can't even remember the, the Huff, Huffington Post, that one. So Yes, you that's a big doing, one, right. Doing, you know, the interviews to kind of, get you started and start that snowball effect. That way you're not reaching out to, you know, the thought leaders or the social media influencers right away, you know, without 
having anything and going, Hey, do you think I could maybe um, interview you on my platform? Because I've got like four followers and I'm super, for awesome. I've got really good questions because that's kind of, people are going to look at that and be like, really, really? So you want to start with people in your own network that you have, you know, you're able to go, Hey, would you mind if I did a quick 20 minute interview with you? And you know, you guys are friends, you guys know each other, you guys have worked together. Yeah, sure. Why not? And then from there go, I had such a great time interviewing you. Would you be able to recommend anybody else who would be interested in being interviewed by me? Now, you've asked great questions. They had a great experience. You know, you had a system for everything and they were able to promote it and it went really well. Of course, they're going to give you as many people as they think they can to be able to be interviewed by you. And then suddenly you've got a wait list of 30 people who want to be interviewed by you and everyone else is lining up saying, go get interviewed by this person. They're great to work with. So that's kind of the right. snowball effect. And then you start, you know, taking it online and building that content strategy. And then that buzz kind of just snowballs. It, it, it I implodes. Implodes. It's, I like that. It explodes. <laughs> it not implodes. That means it comes in. Explodes. Hey, yes. you know, this is an interesting question from one of our um, attendees. And, and she says, it's like, can I use other people's content to create buzz or build thought leadership? That's an interesting question. Because I've heard <laughs> of like a term, you know, instead of creation, it's curation. Is yes. that where we're going? I mean, I, I, can I believe I have the buzzword? Woo! <laughs> yes. Yay, Michelle. We're actually getting to learn these words. <laughs> I'm getting there, baby. I'm getting there. Um, yes. Curating content is a really big deal, especially in thought leadership. Um, like I said before, you want to be able to put new ideas out into the industry. And even if that's taking someone else's content and putting your own spin on it, because that's the really important part. You can curate all day long, but unless you have either A, written permission to republish, or B, have put your own spin on it while crediting the original writer, you are copyrighted. If you did not do one of those two things, you are in violation of copyright by US law or whatever the world law and online people will be very mad. So. If you're going to just republish the same thing, you need written in your hand permission saying, yes, I will allow you to republish my content. Or you can take pieces of that original content and you can respond to it. Either say, yes, I agree. No, I don't agree. Well, okay, maybe, but what if you you tried this other thing. So that's kind of the way around copywriting it. And you're not plagiarizing. You're just responding. Ta -da. You, know, you, you stopped me at that one. I'm like, wow, okay. And so there's really, I mean, that alone could be one beginning strategy, right? Yes. It's a comment. But I think also talk a little bit about maybe the strategy of commenting, right? Because you definitely there can be a good um, reaction or a bad spin if you do that. Like if you're constantly criticizing, is that ever a way to become a thought leader or what would be your thoughts on that? Cause that's what I go to is I see stuff sometimes on LinkedIn that I go, wow, do they have any idea that they're not looking in the best light when they're ripping up somebody's article? I mean, again, you, you kind of say be positive or whatnot. I do, so, I do see some people go, to the negatron john kind of side of the house so what what are your thoughts on that if you're going to curate as opposed to create there are definitely a ton of platforms that focus on that type of respondents responding um that's good there's <laughs> there's a lot of people who respond in that manner and it gets them a lot of buzz and it gets them a lot of you know business opportunities, content, all of that. For me personally, I'm not that person and I don't ever want to be associated with that person. So if you're going to go that route, you're going to have to do it yourself because I'm, I'm not down with that. But it's just, it, the response can be negative in that I don't agree or I criticize while still being respectful, while still being professional. 
you don't have to come in and go, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're stupid, you're wrong, get out of here. You can come in and you go, right. I understand your point of view, but with these ideas and this facts that I have and this type of content, you know, taking this other study into effect, I think you may be off base or, you know, I, I'm, I think they're off base. This is why. And it's not coming in and saying, you know, they're horrible, they're stupid or anything like that you want to be respectful because this is an online platform it's never gonna go away and it's scary to think about that but it's the fact of the internet it's never gonna go away so you need to right. be able to put stuff out there that you're gonna be proud of that your daughters or your sons or you know your partner in business is gonna be proud of you, just because you have the opportunity to put something negative out there doesn't mean you should. And, you know, that's, that's wise advice. Because, I mean, sometimes I look at what people put out there and I go, woo, you know, I mean, you got to remember that stuff's on there forever, right? And yeah. then if people start sharing it and commenting, in fact, I'm going to go, I'm going to go kind of negative for a moment and then I want to leave on a high note. So be thinking <laughs> how, Kaylee, you want to inspire everybody at the end here. But, you know, I watched, uh, it was incredible. I mean, I always watch where, female leaders are making an impression and making an impact. And I um, was on Facebook, believe it or not, I was on Facebook and I watched a comment by somebody. It was a, when the NFL um, started with their football games, right? The season started just a couple of weeks ago. And there was a gentleman who was posting on Facebook who said something about one of the NFL announcers who now is the first woman commentator um, to call games for the NFL. And, he just was very, I mean, it was pretty bad in what his comment was. And there were like 80,000 comments coming in that this gentleman had said, and he kept trying to defend his point of view. And it was like, dude, let it go. You know what I mean? It was just, it was not, I'm sure how he wanted to be seen, you know, for what he said, because it, it, again, it was like the first you know, show and, you know, the first game and, and it was like, wow, dude, not appropriate. And it was really bad. And I thought, man, you just got to be really purposeful about what you comment on and say, is this going to be how I want to be represented if it is a comment, right? Because that it, it did not make him look well at all. In fact, it was really, it was blowing up all over Facebook and I went, not good. So thoughts on that. And then I'm going to ask you a final question because we're okay. almost done. Yes. Um, the one thing I want to let everyone know, and this is not to scare you, it's just so that way you're knowledgeable. But when you do something like that, you could end up being featured in articles, you can end up being featured on, you know, BuzzFeed, they do a lot of actual news articles and stuff like that. Um, and that's something that when you get Googled, it's going to come up. And it's probably going to be the first one that comes up no matter how good your seo is on everything else that's probably going to be the first thing because it went viral and then someone did a news report on it and everyone reads that news report because they either didn't see the original post or they wanted more information um so right. really be careful when you do stuff like that but i will say that sometimes when you publish content you you come off in that light unexpectedly you know you wrote something that someone or a lot of people took in a the wrong way and you didn't really think about and you didn't consider the fact that it could have been taken that way and that's okay because we're human we make mistakes and you what you need to do then is you need to take that down and put up a response whether that be a Facebook post or another blog post or even a video of yourself saying, I truly apologize. I was trying to make a point, but that was not it. I completely, right. you know, didn't understand what was coming across to all of you. It was my bad, my mistake. It will not happen <laughs> again. And if it does, please call me out on it because I want to rectify it. And that will get right. your authority to raise so much higher than if you had just deleted it and pretended it never existed because people screenshot people save people will find you and just because you deleted it doesn't mean it's gone so make a response to it 
Love it. Now that we scared everybody, I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, let leave on a high note. I mean, for all of our attendees that are thinking, gosh, can I do this? Should I do this? Of course they should do it. Give us just something that we can leave on a high note, dear, because this was great information. I mean, you come from such a different perspective, Kaylee, and, you know, content is king. It really is. I mean, it can either make you look extremely well, and trust me, I'm, it's not something that happens overnight. I mean, I struggle with it. I'm learning. It's like CWI has great information that goes out as an association, and I need to be more prevalent online, which is what I'm working on, you know, with you, actually. And I want to say you've done a great job in helping me. Now we need to, like, get it out regularly. So it's been, it's been quite a work in progress. But what could you leave us with that I will say thank you, our listeners are inspired, um, something positive? I am going to leave you with Marie Forleo's tagline because I absolutely love it. And everything is figureoutable. It takes strategy. It takes time. <laughs> it takes some effort. But everything is figure outable. You can figure it out. Just sit down and write it out. I promise it'll be okay. I love it. <laughs> I, and I'm, I love Marie Forleo. Well, well, I think I don't think there's anybody that doesn't. So, Kaylee, <laughs> you were awesome as our thought leader today. And you are most definitely a thought leader. I want to thank our attendees for listening in and joining us. As we're going to be back again in two weeks with another Women Lead webinar series. Uh, basically, you know, with the topic on how you can lead, achieve, and succeed more effectively in business. All right. Thanks.